Hi, my name's Bo. Welcome to Bushcraft Heroes. As the sun beats down, the bushcrafters give thanks that it's not raining today. Majestic birch shedding its skin, providing a perfect tinder for those skillful enough to use it. So I think as a project for today, we're going to make a workbench, like a countertop height kitchenette worktop style it. job. It's nice to be able to stand and prepare stuff, food and whatever you want to do. Sometimes it's nice just to have a worktop to build on. So we're gonna uh, take a piece from here and uh, make a frame and take you along for the ride. But first things first, when nature cools, it's time to fertilize the soil. All right, let's chop our bits to length. Get some horizontals up in here. Okay guys, so we've got our four short end pieces and our four long pieces. And now we're gonna cut them so that they'll notch out and fit together nicely uh, and be nice and stable when we tie them up. We're gonna cut in with the saw halfway through the wood and then notch out that piece and then do the same for the short piece and then they'll sit together nicely so then when we tie them up or however we decide to fix them together they won't move and twist so much. You don't need to cut all the way through. What? You don't need to cut all the way through. Yeah, I mean yeah, you like, do. Yeah. Split that off with the knife. So then you just line your knife up. Yep. Pow, pow. Look at that. Beautiful. And then we're going to do that for every single piece that we've got so that they all fit together nicely. So while Bo is making up the rest of these guys, I'm going to clean these up with my axe and just take all the bark off so they look all pretty. We always said it would be so nice to have an established camp so we can make tables and chairs and make things that are really nice rather than just super bodge job. So it's a real pleasure to be able to be out here and have the time to be stripping bark off of woods to make really nice tables.
nice to be able to use that finally. Yeah, it's only a little cheap one, but and I'm not very practiced at it. Like I don't really know what I'm doing. But there's only one way. Well, there's probably a few ways to learn. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> you could go to school and learn, but I like to learn by doing. So. A good way to learn. Alright guys, we have our two short pieces and our two long pieces. They're all notched out and been cleaned up. So now we're going to eye them up and make any little fine adjustments we need for each particular joint um, and dry fit it. Once we've dry fitted it, then we'll tie it all together. So there you go guys, that's what we're working with. So the way we want to tie this off, because we're no good at knots, is we cut a notch here, a notch here, and then we're going to wrap the cordage around the corner with a jam knot and just tighten it up so it's self-tightening. And that should just cinch all the corners together once there's equal pressure applied on, applied on all four corners. And I'm going to do a Canadian jam knot, which is real simple. You just do an overhand knot like so and then come in and do another overhand knot behind it and then take your live end put it through the loop and then you just basically ratchet strap it <laughs> like that I'm not going to tighten this too much right now. I'm going to wait until we've done got all four on, and then we can just keep cinching them all up to each other um, to get it nice and tight, because obviously this can come way tighter. Yep. So that's what we ended up with. It's not too bad, it's keeping its shape pretty well. Um, I'm gonna feel a lot better about it when we have some uh, planks um, attached to it to help keep its shape. But it's, it's holding together pretty well, so. Took a bit of a break there, but now we're back and we're gonna get this tabletop finished up. So we got some excess little planks there we're gonna cut to length and just nail in to our uh, base. On the new table, there's already graffiti on the f***ing table. Yeah. Someone got done for tagging at school, didn't they?
Wow, it's getting dark. I'm sorry, guys. Running out of space. So you get the picture. We'll show you when it's done. So we're just going to go and look for some uh, suitable legs for our table. Uh, probably some green wood, probably wood that's poplar that's shrouding around spruce. That's kind of our game plan now is to just take stuff that's around the spruce. Uh, and then we're going to cut them up to length and yeah, get the legs on. But we need some nice straight thin ones for the side. So we're just going to fell a couple of these thin poplars here in this spruce sprucey grove area all about freeing up the spruce man whenever we can Okay guys, so we've got our table upside down on the ground and then we're gonna measure up how high we want these to be. So what we're gonna do to allow these to slot in nicely is put a little chamfer, like a little wedge shape on the end so that they can poke into the gaps um, and just tuck in really nice. Then once we've got them, got it all squared up, we're going to mark an X and then cut a notch so the two pieces slot together and that will just give it a little bit of extra support. At least that's what we think we're thinking. So next thing we're going to clean these up and take all the bark off and uh, just make them look real nice like the rest of the table. Yeah, that seems to be the best technique. If you wedge it into your shoulder Quite therapeutic this. Tidy up these ends with the axe because don't want to cut too close to your body. Old trusty Husqvarna. Love this thing. Ta-da! Oh, it's gonna look great. So I'm gonna put a few no nobules on the end of this as well. What, what are you gonna I'm put here. on the end of it? The little chamfers. Nobules. Nobules? Little nobules. Nice. I think that's probably best. It's probably the official, work... the official name for it, isn't it? I'm gonna try and work with the curve of the wood here, so I'm gonna put my nobules on. <laughs> right. <laughs> with the curve. So you can see how it curves a little bit. So I'm gonna work with that.
I've definitely found in doing this sort of stuff, the easiest way to do it is to always be chopping down with your axe and just move the wood to the angle you want it rather than trying to chop at different angles with your axe. So that's what I was going for there guys. Just a little bit of a wedge. So it can wedge up into the corners of the table easily. And uh, just, I think it will make it a little more sturdy. Okay, we're gonna finish cleaning these up and then we'll be right back with you. So, we've got our four legs. You can see the way these chamfers work. They're just gonna help wedge up into the, gro the groove. And then now we're going to want to mark up square where we're going to cut our angle. I'll do them one at a time, I think. So you just, if you just keep, the, keep your eye on that end bit and just make sure it stays square, then I know that I'm going halfway. With your knife. Or I can clean it with my knife while you do the next one. Yep, that's good. So you see what we've done. Now I'll go in and tidy it up. Nice. So we're going to mark up all four of the legs and get them all prepared in the same fashion that we've done this one, and then we'll be ready for dry fitting. So we're just, just tidying up, nothing too crazy, just squaring off anything that looks a little bit mad. In my experience, it's, it's always worth taking the time to make your joints fit as best you can. Uh, saves a lot of trouble down the road. I think that's pretty good though. Nice. So we got our two pieces, now we're going to dry fit them, check if they fit snugly in the gaps. Well the joints are good, that is, that is great, those, those are butted up real nice and tight. It's a little bit loose there but once we tighten it all up. Yeah we're going to cinch round here, so well, it's going to be good, I think that's great, let's make the other two. We could bang a nail straight through the middle, but I don't really want to do that. I don't want to risk splitting them after all the work we put into it. So we're going to bind it up with paracord, and that should stabilise it enough. A jam knot. So here? Yep. Jam knot.
on this one, because we traced it off of the other ones, which were slightly wider, we've been left with a little gap here. So we made a little wooden wedge to just wedge in underneath here. Oh, thin end up top there, like that. And so we'll lash it up and then just knock it off after we're done. Right, now that changes, hold it up. Now, now that's tied up, I'm just gonna take the edge of this batten off. Wedge. Like that, sorry, the wedge, batten the edge of the wedge. And we should be good. First thing we're gonna do, guys, is drop, ah, right on a bloody thorn. <laughs> so the first, ah, right on my arm. <laughs> so first thing we're gonna do is drop down one end into the, into the, Hang on, lift her up. There we go. Nice. Like that. All right, so we're looking pretty good. We're on incredibly uneven ground, hence the super slope. And obviously the whole thing will want to collapse left and right. So the final piece of the puzzle is we're gonna add a center piece um, with notches cut out so it just slots down Lock. over the over the Vs. And locks it. And locks it all together. Boom. So I'm just gonna measure out my big solid beam. For this bit, I oh, just don't leave it. Yeah, no. Get it from that straight bit, like that, right? Yeah. Give myself a good. Yeah. I think mean, the overhang's fine, like that. Having a bit of, you could hang stuff. You keep two hands yeah. on it, just like. You could hang stuff off of it as well. So it's overhang a bit. Yeah. So I'm just going to saw out these notches that we marked. We're hoping it's going to kind of lock it all in place. Fingers. Lash it though? Yeah. Should. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe it'll do f all. Hammer it down or something? Like, baton it down? I'm gonna just bust out those other joints there. How the hell do other people do this? What? Would there be if you put something between here and here? Oh, the right. Right. These are on a weird angle. Not too bad. What happens if we do, if we just wedge something fully, like Between cut a piece and two. just knock them, like make them long? And like knock them in. I think they just fall out in there though. When we move it and stuff. Right. Unless you wedge the end of it. So, in an effort to help um, keep these all wedged in nice and tight, 
we've taken a, a little excess piece of um, skirt here <laughs> and we've notched out both corners top and bottom so that we can wedge it in like this and that should help keep the legs from being able to twist in and out Is working a charm. Yeah. Squirrels are coming out. They want our food, no doubt. Papau. <laughs> Let's test that out. See how far. Might be a little much meat. Yeah? I mean, it wants to be pretty tight, no? Yeah, but that's... Like, insane? That's like... I think that's good. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what it probably wants. Yeah. Nice. That's already feeling sturdier. And we can lash it as well. So we've just put the last two pieces in and it's much more steady, it's still pretty but you know, it's a makeshift table and I think it's gonna be pretty good. We're just gonna flip it over. Flip it over and uh, see how she is. All right, let's do her. Do you wanna guide these and I'll lift from the bottom? Yeah, we're gonna go all together. That's pretty good though. Yeah. It's not just gonna fall down. Sweet. Well, there you go. We actually managed to get it to work. All right, guys, thanks for joining us for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like or a comment on the video down below. Let us know what you thought of our makeshift bodgery job bushcraft table. It's been really fun. We've enjoyed having you along. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Adios. Bye. Bushcraft I like.